Good morning. Our word for today is hold on to faith. When life has turned its back on you, know that God never fails. I challenge all of you today that God's promises are yea and amen. And whatever you're going through, allow that which you are managing, allow God to manage. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for the work that you're doing in and through our lives on this word line. But Father, we need to hear a word from you. I do not ask you to make our road easy as we go through our daily lives. All I ask, Father, is that you would continue to guide us along the way. Thank you, God, for being our compass. For when we are on the wrong path, Lord, steer us back to the place where we belong. Now, Father, let this word flow like a river flow. Allow the hearers to hear your voice, not mine. In Jesus' name, may we all say amen and amen. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, Death initially came by man. Also, the resurrection from death came by man. Everybody dies in Adam, but everybody comes alive in Christ. We have to wait our turn. Christ is first. Then those with him at his coming shall experience the grand consummation when after crushing the opposition, he hands over his kingdom to God the Father. He won't let up until the last enemy is down and the very last enemy is death. As the psalmist said, he laid them low, one and all. He walked all over them. When scripture says that he walked all over them, it's obvious that he couldn't at the same time be walked on. When everything and everyone is finally under God's rule, the son will step down, taking his place with everyone else, showing that God's rule is absolutely comprehensive. For there will be a perfect ending. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. I want to use for my topic this morning, the necessity of our resurrection. After the festivals of the first fruits came Pentecost, which was 50 days later. It found its fulfillment in Pentecost in the New Testament when the church began. But it will find its ultimate fulfillment when Christ comes for his own. For we shall rise to meet him in the air. That will be the real Pentecost. Now note that we will not repeat the day of Pentecost down here. Allow me to set the record straight. You see, the Pentecost we should all be waiting for is when the Lord Jesus comes to take his church out of this world. Oh, how wonderful that will be. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept meaning the sleep of death. For since by man came Adam, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. When the word says the dead in Christ will rise first, this means that God will raise the dead in Christ first at the event of the rapture, and then he will take believers up to be with him in the air. As Christians, we should pray for that day, especially when looking all around us today, there is so much chaos. However, we must still be productive for the Lord today. Note that after the festival of the first fruit came Pentecost. Now understand that in Judaism, the first fruits, which is known as Shabbat, was very important. The belief is that 
fruit trees live their own life and are to remain untrimmed for three years after they are planted. Even then, their fruit cannot be enjoyed until God is given his share. It is so important that the church that we belong to, if they are feeding you the word of God, you should pay the tithe. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 9 through 22, it says, You shall eat neither bread nor grain, parched or fresh, until this same day, until you have brought the offering of your God. It is a statue forever. Now understand that they had to trust God, that he would indeed provide the fullness of grain they had yet to come forth. Now, from a human perspective, this was far from certain. Given the people's utter dependence on the right amount of rainfall and so forth to give the best crop. Oh, how wonderful that is. Christ has risen from the dead and he has become the first fruit of them that slept, which means the sleep of death. For since by man came death, speaking of Adam, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Say with me now, in Adam all die. Now the proof that you are in the family of Adam is that you and I are going to die unless the Lord comes to take us in the rapture. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Now, there are a group of people who are called reformers. These reformers are those who recovered a great deal of the truth of the Bible, but they didn't recover all of it. Understand that you and I are living in a time when there is much Bible study in the field of eschatology. Now, eschatology means the doctrine of last things. Now, allow me to take it a little bit further. This term is the part where death, judgment, and the final destiny of the soul Now, we must be on guard due to so much heresy, which is a belief or someone else's opinion contrary to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. This is the reason why we must study the word of God so that men will not deceive us. Christ is the first fruits. And then afterwards, they that are Christ's at his coming, he is coming for his church, which means you and I, for we are the church. Note that it's not the building, but it is you and I. Then cometh the end. The end of what? The end of the age. How will the age end? There will come the great tribulation. And then there is going to be the millennial kingdom here on earth. Satan will be released again for a little while. Then he will be cast into the lake of fire. And the Lord Jesus Christ will establish his king forever. That will be the eternal kingdom. The eternal kingdom is a further projection of a millennial kingdom. Only the millennial kingdom will be a time of trial. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. When will this take place? It will be at the end of the millennial kingdom. Christ will be put down. All rule. 
all authority and all power. Chapter 15, verse 26 tells us that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. This means that when Jesus Christ has completed his eternal reign, then he will return back to his place in the Godhead where he was in the beginning so that God himself may be all in all. Oh, what a day that will be. Heavenly Father, we, your children, are so grateful for all the things you have done in and through our lives. Father, forgive us. Forgive us of the times in which we were so busy that we did not have time to pray. Forgive us, Lord, for being so busy that we never took the time to sup with you. So, Lord, we ask on today that you would forgive us. Help us to be more aware of your presence. For you have kept us. You've never left us. For your promises, oh God, are yea and amen. We are so grateful for all that you have done for us. God, I ask that you would keep a hedge of protection over us and over our families. For you have been so good. Let us not forget. Lest we forget Gethsemane. Let we forget thine agony. Lest we forget thy love for thee. Oh God, lead us to Calvary. Oh God, may we be willing to bear daily our cross for thee. Fill us, God, with thy desire, and may we never forget Calvary and how you died on the cross for us. So undeserving, yet you died that we might be free. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. As we keep our minds stayed on the Lord, he will keep us in perfect peace. Remember, God loves you unconditionally. God bless you.